I'm going to use the flame timer system to add a countdown timer to the flutter overlay on the flame game system. Create three variables. The first will be a timer. Let's call it countdown timer. The second will be remaining time, which will be an integer. And the third will be a Boolean variable to see if the timer has started or not. We're going to start the timer when the girl first moves in a left or right direction. When we instantiate the flame game timer, um, I'm going to do this in the onload method. There is a number in seconds as to the interval that you want the timer to kick in at. And you can either repeat it or not repeat it. And in this case, we should be able to repeat it. Then there's a comma. And then at every tick, it's going to pass it a function. And within the function, you can run some type of code. I'm going to check to make sure that the remaining time is greater than zero and, and then decrement the remaining time within the the function as we're using the overlay system within flame we have to notify the listeners of a change at this stage i should add another property to set the repeat to true but i'll take care of that a little bit later in the video in order for the timer to actually run, we're going to have to update it. And we'll do this within the update loop. I'll just set up a if statement to make sure that the timer is has already been started because we only want the countdown to start taking place when the character has started moving to left or right, not when she's just dropping down at the beginning of the game. And the syntax is countdown.update and you pass it the change in time within the update loop of flame game. Now we need to set the boolean variable to have the timer be started and we're going to trigger it with the left or right presses on the mobile app screen. We're using the edges of the screen itself as the mechanism to move Lena either left or right. Whenever the that side of the screen is tapped, either left or right, we're going to set the Boolean variable timer started to true. In dashboard.dart, the Flutter widgets that we're using as the overlay for the system, let's start off with some type of string to indicate the remaining time. In the plot, the girl, Lena, is going after these magical gems. So every time she hits a gem, her magic score will increase. And there's another score, there's another decreasing number here, which will be the remaining power of her hoverboard. She has some type of magical hoverboard, which allows her to traverse over things like water, and to a limited extent, she can get a fairly big uh, air on this. The gems don't power up the board. We have to think of some other mechanism to power up the board. Most likely, it will be a change in level, and then the board will achieve full power again if she completes the course within the given time frame. The dashboard spawns from a single widget, the dashboard. The dashboard accepts the game. The game is from the flame game system. Because we have the entire game within the dashboard, we can access the individual properties such as the remaining time. Using string interpolation, we can get the remaining time to appear on the screen and as we're notifying the listeners, the power remaining will decrease. We do have to set the update, um, the function to be repeating on the decreasing time. The timer can either run once or you could repeat it. 
So after the function, we'll add a comma and set the repeat to true. We're going to introduce some type of game over functionality. When the remaining time is reaches zero, we're going to stop the movement of the girl. So within the if statement, uh, that controls the movement of the girl on the horizontal axis. We'll set up another Boolean check to make sure that the remaining time is above zero. Right now, there's no way to add additional time. However, we could take care of that in the future. Maybe there's a portal or something. Right now, the, the game is uh, very short. There's only one level. So as soon as the remaining time hits zero, her movement will stop. We'll start working on the graphics for the game over message, kind of in that classic all caps game over and likely introduce uh, uh, some type of retro font to it to make it even seem more retro. Because we're using the flutter widget and the overlay is in a column, we can easily add an additional row under the first row. And in this new row, we'll add the text string game over in all caps, uh, just for the retro feel. We'll add a style. This is all from Flutter. Um, that's probably why you're using Flame, is to access these awesome Flutter widgets and the material design system. I'm gonna select a big font size 80, use the material color red colors dot red from the material package of flutter i don't have any boolean check to see whether it's game over or not so initially the we're just looking at the aesthetics how it appears and it's all the way to the left and it's because the row will uh, it'll have everything to the left initially we can easily change this by centering the contents of the row by setting the main axis alignment of the row to the constant main axis alignment dot center. And then it will be centered. One of the ways to push down the text is simply to add a sized box within the column. The size box will be invisible and we just need to specify the height and it will push down the game over closer to the center of the screen. This is just for the artistic effect. You can place it wherever you want, of course. It's how they look that you want for your game. To have the game over only appear when the game is actually over, we're gonna use a ternary operator. The ternary operator is like an if statement Syntax is a little weird. There's a question mark and a colon. So if the condition after the question mark is, is true, then it'll display an empty container. If it's false, which means the game is really over, then it'll display the game over. I'm also gonna disable the jump um, when the game is over. So when the time remaining is 
not greater than zero, we're, um, we're not going to allow the jump. So we'll just put an if statement in here. She's still, she's still going to be able to turn left or right with the, I guess, momentum of her body, but she won't be able to make any horizontal movement or vertical movement, actually. To continue with the retro feel, I'm going to change it to Arcade Classic Font. Adding the new fonts is similar to any other Flutter project. We're only going to use the fonts in the Flutter overlay system, so the analogy uh, should be very familiar to you. In the assets, create a new folder called fonts. And in the new subfolder with an asset slash fonts, we're going to add the font that we just downloaded. So you're going to need to unzip that file. And I'm using the Arcade Classic font. The process is to first copy the font file itself. It's a true type font, TTF. After you copy it into the asset slash fonts folder, then go into pubspec.yaml and make that font accessible to your game or to your Flutter project. We're going to call the family Arcade. This is defined by us. And we just specify the asset location of it. So there's some examples here. You can just edit it and copy it. The location that we're storing is assets slash fonts. And I have a typo there. It should be arcade classic.ttf. In my case, I actually had to fully stop the game, not just hot restart it for the changes to take in, take effect. But after I restarted the game again, you can see the magic. It is using that retro font and I do like the look of it. So I'm going to go with the retro font. You can pick any type of style that you want. It doesn't have to be a retro game. It could be a maybe a modern or high tech game or a cartoon theme to your game. So right now there's no way to restart the game. You have to, you know, on the debug, just restart it itself. There's no button when it's in the game. I think I'm going to work on the plot just a little bit longer and then start working on a different project after that. I think I'm going to have the girl be saving her father, actually. Subscribe to the channel for updates on the more than 50 videos I've made on Flame. The videos with source code are also available for free on Teachable, 100% free course. This is a hobby. In whatever way you choose to learn, make sure you have fun and unleash your creativity. Have a fantastic day.